In this video, I'm going to be taking a look at a hand that comes from day one of the 6 max 55k euro buying tournament at the Triton Montenegro High Roller Series. Uh, this is early on in the tournament and the players are very deep stacked. This particular hand is between Sam Greenwood and Linus Holger. So Sam opens the action on the button uh, with Jack Eight of Diamond. He raises it three x, and Linus calls on the big blind with six deuce of clubs. The flop comes nine nine three with two diamonds and a spade, and Linus quickly checks. And if we look at the solver strategy, uh, we see that the solver indeed is checking with virtually its entire range here, ninety three point five one percent. Um, one thing I want to note uh, is that in the prior video there were a few comments about the big blind range being too tight, uh, which uh, after some further reflection I do agree with. Um, so to provide some background, I'm getting these ranges from Poker Snowy, um, which I know is tighter than the general population. Uh, so in this particular hand I've added, uh, I started from the Poker Snowy range initially and then I've added some additional holdings such as some of these uh, unsuited connected cards as well as virtually all of the su suited cards with very degrees of frequency. Um, I do think that Linus may be calling even wider than this, you know, perhaps 100% of his range on the big blind versus the button, uh, but obviously Linus is unique. Uh, you know, he has a post-flop edge against pretty much the entire population and I, I want to try to analyze his videos more from the perspective of uh, you know the general population which hopefully this range represents but I do want to note that Linus is likely calling wider here um, and that may affect the analysis. Greenwood's got the flush draw. It's very hard for his opponent to actually hit the swap. Especially if a lot of players don't defend the three too much. And Sam decides to check behind and if we look at the solver we see that uh, the solver is using a mixed strategy with most of its range. Uh, the button is tending to check a lot of these ace x's as well as some of these Broadway cards that have decent equity um, and we see these over pairs are also being checked. Uh, whereas it's betting a lot of these under pairs, which you know obviously can use some protection, uh, and then some of these connected cards, which are probably very low, you know, low equity here. Yeah, so low equity. So uh, the solver is turning these cards into uh, these holdings into a bluff. It was interesting to me to see that virtually all of these nines are betting. Um, which seemed counterintuitive, especially on a dry board, since the nines don't need a ton of protection against most of the big blinds range. Um, so why is this? Well, we know that to maintain a balanced range, generally you want to have uh, some strong hands in your betting range and then also some strong hands in your checking range. So on this particular board, the strong hands are primarily consisted of the trips, these trip nines, and over pairs. Um, and it seems that Pio is actually favoring checking most of the over pairs, but betting the nine. So why is that? Well, in my experience, I think most human beings, most players tend to kind of heavily weight protection as a factor in their decision making. Um, but I think the solver doesn't really weight protection as heavily. Um, it seems to lean more towards using blockers and unblockers. So although these over pairs could use some protection, in particular like these jacks and tens, obviously queens even, you know, they could use some protection. Um, I think the over pairs are so far ahead of the big blinds range, the more important factor here are the blockers. So holding a nine doesn't really block any of uh, the big blinds continuing range, whereas holding aces, kings, queens, jacks, will actually block a significant portion of big blinds continuing range. So if we, for example, decided to bet here, we see that all of the this portion uh, of the range is being folded out. Um, a lot of, but a lot of these ace, ace X's are continuing. We see pretty much any two overs plus a front door, a back door, a flush draw are continuing. And even, you know, ace 10, without a flush draw uh, and ace eight without a flush draw those holdings are continuing so I think um, 
from the solver standpoint, it would prefer to bet these nines instead of uh, these over pairs because the over pairs are blocking some of the big blinds continuing range. And if we look at Sam's particular holding, we see that the solver does favor betting here, although the EV between betting uh, small and checking is basically identical. And I think that's probably consistent with most of the flush draws. Right, so if we look at the range explorer um, and the flush draws, yeah, we see that it's using a mixed strategy with uh, most of its flushes, which I think is pretty common for the solver to do. Usually the EV difference between betting and checking draws is pretty similar, so really either strategy is appropriate. So the turn brings a deuce of hearts, giving Linus bottom pair, and he decides to lead out with a very small 27% uh, pot bet. Right, and if we look at the solver, um, we see that the big blind is taking the lead around 50% of the time, uh, but it's favoring actually a full pot size bet for most of its range. If we look at the deuces in particular, we see that the solver is checking most of these holdings uh, and it'll between you know the deuces that it is holding it's favoring betting uh, when it has a flush draw in addition to the pair um, if we look at six deuce in particular uh, we see that it's checking most of this range uh, but when it does bet which it does a small percentage of time it's actually favoring a half pot size bet um, or a third pot size bet as opposed to the full pot bet which I think makes sense, right? Right. The bottom pair is ahead of most of the buttons range here, but it's a marginal hand. Uh, it could benefit from some protection, and betting small should fold out a lot of the over over cards and other holdings that the button may have that are behind at the moment, but have equity going to the river. Um, but at the same time, a larger bet with bottom pair is probably not as profitable since the big blind should have some strong holdings, you know, such as the over pairs as we saw in its flop checking range. So. Uh, even though this is not a high frequency play, it seems to be appropriate here. Stepping up folding, debating whether he should consider a raise. Just gonna call. And Sam decides to check behind. And if we look at the solver, we see that the solver is actually raising most of its range here. And if we look at uh, the range explorer, uh, we'll see that, yeah, the solver is pretty much raising any pair and any ace high. Uh, if we look at the flush draws, it's raising most of the flush draws. And even some of this air, pure air, it'll be raising as well. Um, and this was a little bit surprising to me. Uh, you usually don't see the solver raising with such high frequency. Um, I'm not exactly sure why. It appears that Pio is pretty much leveraging uh, the buttons at range advantage against the big blind who you know is probably very wide here he's gonna have a lot of air and he might you know try to take these type of stabs on the turn after the flop goes check check and if we look at jack 8 in particular we see that the EV between uh, calling and raising is pretty similar so either play seems appropriate So the river brings an eight of hearts, uh, giving Sam middle pair, and Linus decides to lead out again with a very small bet. This time it's around 22% pot. If we look at the solver, we see that uh, it is betting most of its range, um, and the twos, the bottom pair in particular, most of these holdings are being bet. Uh, the six deuce in particular uh, is being bet most of the time, uh, around 70% of the time or so. so appears to be a correct bet with the correct sizing here. So Sam decides to raise here and he goes quite large. It's around 4.4x and if we look at the solver uh, we see that it is indeed uh, raising quite large, this larger sizing with uh, most pretty much all of its eights, right? So I gave the option here of raising 3x versus 4.4x, and the solver is choosing 
uh, this larger this larger uh, bet size. It seems that you know in the face of such a small bet from Linus, with the big blind having such a wide range on this board, um, a pair of eights should be relatively high up in this distribution. And if we look at the equities, yeah, indeed it has it has you know 90% plus equity uh, against Linus's range. So. Um, it appears to want to raise quite large here. And I think this highlights one of the risks of these small block slash value bets that Linus makes and you know other players make in that it can induce raises which can make your life very difficult if you're holding a marginal hand. Even if your opponent doesn't have anything, it's a pure bluff, sometimes it'll induce that raise. Uh, it works for regular chips as well. All right. Oh my, look at this play. The re-raise. So he, he left Again, option C. <laughs> this is not, this is some great poker right now. And Linus decides to 3-bet, and he 3-bets quite large. He 3-bets uh, around 4.4x Sam's bet. And so in the face of this raise, it appears that Linus has recognized that his hand is no longer good, so he decides to adjust his strategy and turn you know, what was once a value bet into a bluff. Uh, and looking here at Pio, we see that most of the range is folding to this raise, um, with some threes and twos defending, but mostly as a call. And if we look at the six deuce of clubs in particular, we see that it's interesting that uh, raising this size is actually plus EV. So raising 4.4x is plus 26 EV, but raising the more standard 3x size is actually negative 369 EV. So technically, uh, Linus's play here is correct, although obviously it's a low frequency play. So basically it seems that Linus is betting that Sam's range is capped, but how does he know that? Well, if we look back at the flop, um, you know, we talked about how most of these nines should have been betting on the flop, uh, and then on the turn, Facing uh, Linus's small raise, we see that most of the overpairs, right, should have been re-raising here, and even some of these underpairs that have Linus beat as well, right. Virtually all of these uh, pairs should have been raising on the turns. So based on the action on the flop, the turn, and the river, uh, Linus was able to deduce that uh, Sam was likely Sam was likely capped here, but that's really only half of the equation, right? For Linus to 3-bet, he also has to credibly represent himself that he has a nuttish hand. Well, we talked about how his these small bets can sometimes induce large raises. The obvious counter to that exploit is to include some nuttish hands in your small slash block bet range, uh, which Pio does do uh, with the trip. So if we look back at the flop, right, we see that Linus checked here and most of these lines are checking. And then if we go to the turn, uh, we see that Pio is leading out just as uh, Linus did, although Pio is using generally a larger sizing here uh, compared to, to Linus. And then on the river, we see that uh, Pio does lead out again um, with the smaller sizing that Linus used. And then facing uh, Sam's, Sam's raise, uh, we see that Pio does indeed three bet pretty much all of these nines with the larger sizing. I am loving this hand. We can do one more raise if we want. I know, what a display. If this hand ends in anything but a fold from either player, that will just be the absolute cherry on top. Wow, so... It's a shot clock. Greenwood lays it down. And Sam decides to fold just holding middle pair. And if we look at Pio, we see that Pio also folds most of the time in this spot. Right? Most of these eights are folding, although some of them, you know, maybe around 40%, 35% or so, uh, are being called as a bluff catcher. And if we look at Sam's particular holding with Jack 8 suited, we see that uh, Pio does fold most of the time. It does seem to call a little bit more holding the clubs because that may you know, uh, unblock some of the flush draws that uh, Linus may be bluffing here with. Um, but it does appear that most, you know, the most optimal play is to fold. So I thought this was an interesting hand and it really showed the benefits of having flexibility in your approach and being able to adjust on the fly, you know, turning what was once a value bet into a bluff 
by recognizing that your opponent's range, uh, it, you know, is capped based on the action in the prior streets. I know that, you know, for myself and a lot of other players, sometimes you get stuck in one particular course of action. If you have like pocket aces or a strong hand, you kind of miss a lot of the cues that occur uh, on later streets, and I think that's a mistake. You know, and I think it also shows one of the great values of having a very balanced range where you're able to you know play stronger hands and marginal hands value hands and bluff hands similarly you know that allows you to keep much of your range intact so you can actually shift strategies between streets credibly just as uh, Linus did here so thought that was an interesting hand I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it if you have any feedback please leave some comments and until next time thank you